idea of controlling who you are in digital space in anonymous decentralized systems. Yeah? Um, very important um, item that various folks have been working on, including IBM, uh, Cisco, uh, all those uh, are working on similar solutions. Underwriting. That's one of our uh, one of our main projects here is to to create capital markets that don't necessitate capital in the original sense. You can literally create reputation-based capital markets. That's what this project is about. Our researchers believe that that, that is one way forward. So talk about cre creation of new money. We always talk about digital currencies, digital money right now. But you can actually take a step above and beyond that. And literally, because of this technology, but only because of this technology, could create reputation-based capital markets. That's what this is about, underwriting. Underwriting with reputation systems. Um, okay, so <clears throat> speed resolution, of course, has to be part of it. And then usability. Um, how many in the room have used MetaMask? Hand, please. Scatter? Okay, so usability? Not really, right? It's, these are not crypto friendly products, user, user friendly crypto products, that is. Um, they are, it, it takes Granny cannot interact with those systems necessarily, unless you take a lot of time and explain things. Yeah? They're not intuitive, they're not like Apple, um, Apple-based products, but that's what's needed in this space. You can't expect crypto evolution, the new form of money, to evolve unless you get users, give users an experience that they, they actually don't even notice what they're doing with the technology. That's what's needed. Yeah? It has to be really usable, it has to be 10 times better than what they're currently using. So talk about PayPal other systems, and they, they, cannot even uh, they cannot even notice what's happening on the technology side in the background. That's what's needed. We don't have that. We're still dealing with Etherscan and uh, MetaMask. Now, MetaMask is a, is a wonderful improvement, no doubt, but you can't get go mainstream with it. Now, some of you will say, well, we're mainstream because the big names are experimenting with crypto. Absolutely. Bill Clinton is giving speeches on how wonderful crypto is. Facebook, uh, Goldman Sachs, uh, buying Oyex, all, all mainstream things to do yeah, without true technology solutions. Yeah. Okay, um, market infrastructure, most important. Now, uh, the minister actually uh, alluded to digital property rights. Property rights. Anybody know what crypto kiddies are? CryptoKitties? Who, who owns CryptoKitties? One person, hello. <laughs> okay, um, many people will laugh CryptoKitties off. Many people will say, nah, nah, it's just silly nonsense. Yeah, so we have, we have um, individual kitties on the Ethereum blockchain that are collectibles, that people collect. You know, some, some people collect uh, uh, CryptoKitties with white ears, yeah? and they will pay a premium. What CryptoKitties has taught us is that Digital property rights, true digital blockchain-based property rights are possible. And that's all that cri crypto kiddies is. It's not serious. It's, not, it's a waste of uh, energy in some ways, right? Um, and the Ethereum uh, blockchain shut down because of crypto kiddies um, in, uh, uh, several years or a year ago. Um, but what it teaches us is that people actually want to use this as, a, as true digital property rights. A lot of people talk about tokenization. It's one of the big buzzwords in the space, where um, people really focus on, 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 on tokenization, and of course that's again where the money is, right? But nobody has really given us tokenization in the sense of true digital property rights. Yeah? That, that doesn't exist right now. And most of the tokenization attempts are early stage, I would, I would argue. Okay, some, some other, um, um, how am I on time? Oh my goodness, okay. Um, okay, so birth of a new discipline, crypto economics, um, Ethereum based. So some people um, argue that crypto economics really evolved um, as uh, with the birth of Bitcoin. Um, I would, if, so I reviewed the literature on, on crypto economics, and there really wasn't any. It, it, it's it's just it doesn't exist until um, April two thousand seventeen. The literature didn't exist. People didn't write about it. I mean, and it, 
with the rise in Ethereum transactions leading up to the end of the year 2017, where all of you all of us know uh, Bitcoin had turned 2000, um, that's, that's literally the start, the birth of this discipline. And so, um, I don't want to go through all the definitions, but we're talking about monetary policy mechanism design um, to uh, create new forms of commerce and economies, right? And it's a combination of factors. Now, some people are, uh, are getting very upset if you say that crypto economics really is just economics. Uh, so the, the very strong believers, I got uh, accosted on, online and at certain conferences, crypto conferences, people get very upset if you say it's just economics. Now, so why do we call it crypto economics? Well, we call it crypto economics, and that's why I think this, this field is legitimate, because it's a new combination of fields. We have computer science with economics, regulation, game theory, mechanism design, and uh, cryptography. That new combination of factors, that's what legitimizes calling it crypto economics. But underlying all of it is traditional mechanism designs in, in economics. Okay, um, so I alluded to this earlier, economic experimentation. Unprecedented economic experimentation, only possible right now because of this technology. Every single currency, 5,000 plus or more where we are right now, creates its own economy, arguably. Because of that, we, can, we have ways to experiment with, with economics that we've never experienced before. So we can now do things such as um, looking at the impact of micro and macro economics, uh, and vice versa. Um, there, some people talk about the unified theory of micro uh, and macroeconomics in, in economics. Unprecedented, never happened before. It was un unthinkable because of all the messiness of real world uh, economics. Um, now, one thing that, that is particularly interesting, especially to economists who follow this space, is a theory of the firm, Ronald Coase, Nobel Laureate, University of Chicago. And <clears throat> Ronald Coase believed that firms only exist because markets ca cannot always uh, function in all circumstances, market, market factors. Um, if market, markets don't work, firms are being created. Now, what if the uh, what if cost was wrong? What if we can extend the reach of market factors through crypto designs? This is this is for the first one. This is uh, so reputation verification in crypto economics is is one of those systems that that seems to promise the next step in the evolution of, of the firm, right? Um, so the idea here is that if we lower transaction costs for all market transactions, at some point, creating firms in the traditional sense is no longer necessary. DAOs, so decentralized autonomous organization, I don't have time to go into this, they're, they're a pure firm, form of market exchanges that don't necessitate firms. They're evolving. The, the only reason that DAOs exist is because of the technology. It couldn't exist. So talk about ex uh, economic experimentation. Um, so I have to uh, keep going. So um, back to basics in my five minutes or so. Let's talk, let's talk a little bit about centralized versus decentralized um, economics. So macroeconomics, overall uh, concern with the overall common, uh, economy versus microeconomics, supply and demand in individual markets. So what's the equivalent in decentralized systems? So crypto market economics is really only currently the timing quant uh, and quantity of token creation and the allocation of those tokens. That's all it is currently. Yeah? Um, on the micro side, the value proposition of the tokens, meaning how will these tokens generate value uh, and the econo economic interaction that it, it generates. Um, big question mark if this actually works in crypto right now. Um, traditional metrics on equilibrium with us. So um, now centralized uh, monetary policy. So the Federal Reserve, uh, traditional mechanisms that um, have operated since, it's, since ex existence, discount rate, reserve requirements, open market uh, transaction, interest on the reserve, and so forth. The decentralized equivalent of monetary policy really is, can, be, can be summarized with token supply, <coughs> release, and maximum issuance of tokens. But again, just this, the release of those tokens creates this microcosm of economic experimentation. Yeah, it's its own 
um, in its own little uh, economic world. And the designers, the, uh, the promoters, if you want, they're literally a form of arguably um, investment, uh, sorry, uh, 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 fat equivalency, if you want. Yeah? But that creates, in some ways, a, a democratization of, of policy making, yeah? because it's not uh, a highly selected few individuals that make those decisions um, with all the human flaws that, that, that are attached in, in institutionalized processes. It's individuals who are uh, uh, not necessarily economically educated who are making these decisions. That, of course, creates enormous problems. Enormous problems. And one, re one reason why these designs seem to fail, and why the market is flushing them out right now, is because these are people who are not necessarily economically trained. And we have we, the engineers who are making these decisions now. Of course, uh, with the support of, of consultants, but there are better ways. There are better ways to, to make, to creating these monetary so, uh, policy solutions. And that's one central um, area of research that Samana has uh, invested in. So, fiscal policy, um, of course, taxing and spending in centralized systems. On the de decentralized side, we really are only t talking about the um, adjustment of commercial benefits of tokens, the uses, the use cases that can be associated with those tokens. They are really currently uh, the only equivalent of fiscal policy. Now, just very quickly in my five minutes or so, can we use efficient capital market hypothesis in crypto? So this is more than 100, 100 years or so of research of, of how, on how markets function. And, of course, if I go to a crypto conference uh, and or speak to an exchange, many traders will get upset and say, oh, this hasn't worked um, at all in our systems, markets are flawed. And, of course, that's true. Yeah? Uh, but there's a lot, a very strong body of research in the ECMA that suggests that price allocations and um, price improvements are somehow um, functioning in the following ways. Yeah? So we have... Uh, in quantity and supply, of course, uh, new information is released to the market at T1. Uh, currently, we are at P0. Uh, market reacts at T plus 1, um, which gives us new supply, new demand um, in uh, P1, right? So prices increase. The question really is becomes if the fiscal and monetary policies that we have in, uh, available in crypto uh, economics, if they can create the same effect. Big question mark. So, in one argument here would be to call this into question: we don't have in crypto a unified slash mandatory disclosure regime. It doesn't exist. So, if we don't have a baseline, sorry, if we don't have a baseline for disclosures, 10K, 10Q, uh, 8K, and so forth in the United States. Um, what happens? Well, the market discounts or any information that is available on the underlying security token, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So, and of course, one reason, if, if this doesn't work, you don't have the liquidity that I referred to earlier. The, the, token, the token design, uh, in, in, that, in that sense, is subject to this enormous volatility and the discounting. Now, imagine a system in which the existing crypto market, after it's got, got flush, flushed out, yeah, I'm talking about three, four, five years from now, if the existing market was, uh, talk about the capital market on ramp, right? This is, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about liquidity. Mandatory re uh, re disclosure regimes. Once you have that, once everybody ma mandates the, the, the disclosures, all of a sudden we see a system. It's, it's, it's theoret theoretically possible, and this is what we're, a lot of um, our time with, uh, spending a lot of our time with, um, it is possible that the, the discounting that's happening right now in the market, the volatility and, uh, and the lack of liquidity can, can be changed. Yeah? But right now, it doesn't, it doesn't exist. Crypto markets cannot follow this mechanism. Yeah? Um, okay. So, illiquidity, big ticket item, uh, 
and I alluded to those factors. So let me, let me just walk through. So some people always push back and say, why should we care? Why should we care about this? So policymakers. Uh, a lot of them, so I uh, spoke at the Federal Reserve a few uh, months ago, they, they start um, talking about it, but they, there's always this, why do we talk about this? It's not big enough, right? Now at the end of the year, oh, that, that was different, right? A lot, it was a wake-up call for a lot of folks. But now, given that we're, uh, we're flushing out all these, uh, uh, these coins, there's a real question mark um, that, that keeps coming up. Why should we react with a policy solution if the, if the market isn't big enough? Well, it, it's not where the market is now that is important for regulators to consider. It's important to consider where, what this new form of money and reputation is just an extension of that in decentralized systems, yeah, can be in the, in the next few years. And that's why the, the ministry, the Gibraltar ministry reacting to this is so, so, so important. Yeah, because this, cannot, this market cannot evolve without regulatory support. Now, some crypto purists will debate that and say, oh, no, no, regulatory arbitrage will just go where, where it's feasible. Yeah? Um, that can't happen, all the way at least. Why? Well, um, so Cambridge just uh, half a year ago published a study, 45% of all crypto startups are North American based. Worldwide crypto startups are North American based. Um, it is unfathomable that the, all of those will, will end up in Singapore. Yeah? So there has to be some jurisdictional support across the bay. There's still the op opportunity to list in, in another jurisdiction, but the, the main operations will come out of a given jurisdiction. There's really no way around that. And so without jurisdictional support, the evolution cannot happen. And uh, see, I think I'll end here. Um, I'm happy to take questions if you want me to. Okay, so what we'll do is um, we'll do a bit of a Q&A. I think Wolf, if I can get you to use this microphone and then we'll hand this, well, you've got some microphones back there already. Okay, so in which case we've got, you can keep this one. In which case, the first question is, who's brave enough to ask a question? <laughs> Stable currency, stable coins. Can you define what you're talking about with the word stable? Stable against what? An index of coins, an index of feedback tokens, or what? Yeah, yeah, uh, great question. So, the traditional approach here, would, there, are two, there are two ways to do this. Uh, one is you peg it against the dollar. You simply say one token is equivalent of one dollar. The next approach is an algorithmic approach in which you're saying, we're not just pegging it, we're creating uh, an algorithm that uh, relates it uh, to a basket of goods, CPI. So what's the problem is, nobody knows how to pick that. So if you, if you peg it against the dollar, you're now subject to inflation that comes out of the dollar, right? So you're, 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 you're literally, you're buying into inflationary processes just because you're pegged, right? So how do you get move away from that? Well, you can move away from it if you figure out a way to, in a decentralized fashion, create a CPI, a consumer price index. That hasn't happened. So basis, I alluded to basis, $133 million so far, they have started to experiment with incentive design with three different tokens to create that. that their biggest problem is that they don't have an oracle. Some, something that in a decentralized fashion tells them how to, uh, how to pack it to a CPI that doesn't exist right now. Yeah? So if you don't create that, those, those solutions over time will unravel it themselves in our estimation. Yeah? And there's, there's a pretty strong indicia for that. So our mathematicians are right now working on uh, modeling crash and burn scenarios. Meaning, you are, if you understand in a model the theoretical limits of when a stable, stability coin will crash and burn in a given market environment, you can now start talking about remedies to, again, to economic experimentation, to set up a system in which you know how to, to curtail those crash and burn limits. I don't know, you, is that sufficient? It's, yeah. <laughs> Anybody 
else wants to ask a question after this, you hand up now so we can get a microphone to you more quickly. Good, good morning. So, 